I'm Alex, your entrepreneur, entrepreneur, and uh, today I'm looking at uh, React Hooks. So I wanted to share this quick lesson with you so that you can learn as well. And today we're building just a simple note-taking app with IDs for the notes. Uh, we allow you to delete them, we allow you to add them. It's probably going to take us 15 minutes, it's going to be really fun. Uh, we could uh, reverse engineer what I wrote, but uh, it would be funnier to just write it again. So let me go ahead and delete the whole thing so that there's no trick. The only thing I'm going to keep is this note class so that we have a border and the fact that the body is at 600 pixel and 40 pixel of padding just for uh, to make it look a little better. Okay, so I'm going to reload as you can see. It's actually kind of funny to think that it's still working. What's going on? Uh, most likely it's still uh, as uh, stuff in the file system. So I'm just going to npm start again to show you that we have nothing. There we go. So now we're going to um, create our notes component. And our notes component is going to be responsible for using our hook called useState. It's basically going to have state. So we're going to go ahead and create a new folder called components. We're going to create a new file called notes.js and we're going to import react and we're going to import the use state yes use state from react and what we're going to do next is we're going to export default the function but we're going to give it a curly braces so a body so that we can return here in the render actually we're just going to have a return here sorry that's me thinking and in classes. And then uh, I like to have a convention where I add the name of the component inside of the class. That's just me. You don't have to do this. And uh, this is kind of what we're going to do. Most likely what we're going to do is we're going to do notes.map. And we're going to return a single note for every note, right? So it's mostly going to be note. Okay? And most likely we're going to have a message, which is going to be note. Dot message and to allow deletion and management we're going to also have an id so it's going to be note.id okay obviously it's going to crash because we don't have we don't know what a note is so we're going to define them by literally copying this line right here which said const count set count use state okay the way it works is you define what the name of the variable that contains the value is the function that will update the value and then you use state which is this hook which takes a value that is equal to the initial parameter or rather the initial state. So in our case, we're just going to put a fake object just so that we can keep track of nodes and we can see that it works, right? Right now, uh, actually, I need to rename the variable to nodes and set nodes, right? And as you can see, we have a render method where it uses node. So right now, we're still going to crash because we don't know what node is. So we're just going to go ahead and do import node from dot slash node. Right, new file, node.js, import React from React, and then we're going to export default, and we're going to have a, a, a message and an ID. And we're just going to return again div class name equals node. The reason why I go fast is because actually I want to talk to advanced people. Like if you're a newbie, just look somebody else, honestly. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> I, I love you, but it's kind of true though. So anyway, we're just going to show the uh, message. Actually, we're going to do, yeah, message. And then we're going to do a separator and then ID, colon ID. Okay. So as you can see, we have a note. If I were to add more than one by just doing this, even though it has the same ID, you will see that it works basically, right? So now we're going to go ahead and create a method to add nodes. And the way it's going to work is we're going to have a form, right? We're going to have a form. I like form because uh, that way I can use uh, enter as a shortcut. That's the only reason why. So it's going to be form on submit equals handle submit. Funny enough, we're going to have to pass a bunch of stuff. I'm not sure if I can define the function instead of here, but I don't necessarily think it's a good idea to do so. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be passing a function like this. It's going to receive the event, it's going to receive the nodes, and it's going to receive the set nodes, so we can call them inside of the under submit, which we'll define externally. And the, also, the other reason why doing this is good is because now you can test under submit separately. You don't even need to write uh, render-based tests. You could just write this, and that way you can test your 
handler more easily honestly it just make your life way easier i see people using uh, enzyme and i love that stuff but it's just some things it makes a little more too too complicated so anyway event pre event default so we don't uh, reload and then we're gonna do set notes and we're just gonna add uh, we're gonna have the array we're gonna add the previous notes and we're gonna add a new note that's gonna have an id of uh, let's just type in 10 for now and then a value of uh, a message rather of a new note right so at this point we can uh, comfortably uh, assume that if I had a button here submit we don't even need the button by the way but uh, if I do that I have to declare it with const there we go so now I have a method that when I press the button adds a new note right next up is gonna be uh, having dynamic IDs so const uh, ID is gonna be equal to notes basically I'm gonna check for the last note what ID does the last note have right so I'm gonna do notes actually I'm gonna uh, question I'm gonna ask myself notes the length is it a thing if it is then you're gonna take notes square bracket notes the length dot ID plus one otherwise I'm gonna take zero okay and just to be safe we're gonna do notes uh, dot uh, which is the name of the file then the name of the method then the, the parameter we want to print and the parameter I want to print okay so that way I'm a little safer additionally by having IDs on the right I can see them at all times and as you can see we're not adding anything we're actually getting an exception I cannot read property ID of undefined that's cool that's because I mistype length okay sometimes it happens even the best do a typo <laughs> that's okay so we still have a problem length.id length ah, okay this is gonna be length minus one I'm sorry about that uh, we're not supposed to get the length we're supposed to get the length minus one all right there we go so as you can see it's working so I can also remove my log because I also have a visual way to see what's working what's not working so now let's go ahead and change the message the way we handle the message is we're gonna have an input and we're gonna have an on change right and we're gonna have a value and uh, that means that we're gonna need to have a second method uh, from state so we're gonna have a use state we're gonna literally copy it because there's no reason not to and it's gonna be called form or their uh, input value I guess and set input so what happens when you change you're gonna have an event and you're gonna call set input equal to a uh, e dot target dot value so now we're setting it to that value and then our value is just gonna be input I actually think this works which is pretty mind-boggling it's actually incredible to think that it's working invalid attempt to destroy a non-iterable instance uh, because I haven't called a method and I haven't set the value to default to be a string okay so I set I say the name of the variable which is input I say the name of the handler which is set input and I put it inside square brackets and then I use state and I set the default value which is a comma so now if I change this just to see that it's working there you go so now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna change my handle submit to also have my input and my set input and we'll see why I want the set input as well in a second but uh, you may know why it's for UX reasons so that we can reset the form so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna get our input here instead of the message right technically we could check if the input is not empty but I don't care and then I'm just gonna call set input and I'm gonna set it to an empty string again right so now every time I refresh as you can see I can type and it has a new one okay technically I will check if there's uh, no text blah 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 but I'm not gonna do that last thing I want to do is I want to allow you to delete the note and the way we delete a note is we pass it a handler that is gonna allow us to delete the note so it's gonna be delete note and it's gonna be equal to delete note which is a method that we're gonna define const delete note I'm gonna need basically the ID of the note that I wanna delete and then I'm gonna need the notes and then I'm gonna need set notes right the reason why I need all of them is so that I can duplicate notes or rather operate on top of it and then set notes so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set notes equal to notes.filter and it's a function note that will return all of the notes node.id that are different from the id that I want to remove okay this is all I have to do now to make this work I'm gonna have to define a function that receive a parameter of id and then call delete note 
and uh, uh, the little note is going to have a parameter of ID, a parameter of notes, and a parameter of set notes. So now I can go inside my note class, or rather my note functional component. I can add a new button. So I'm just going to do P and P, and then I'll just do a div to separate, just to separate, honestly. And then I'm going to do a button, and on click, we're going to have the delete note. And the text is going to be delete this note. Now, delete note will receive a parameter that is equal to the ID. Okay? So let's go ahead, let's create a bunch of them. And now I'll delete number three. And now I'll delete number five. And then I'll delete number one. And as you can see, in just a couple of files, we were able to write a nice classless component that is able to manage notes and create as many as we want. By the way, inside of uh, notes, inside of this uh, notes.js file, we have the whole JSON object. So technically speaking, if you wanted to export it, you could just write some sort of uh, export notes that uh, contains notes, and you will be able to pass it fully. So that's why I, that's why I also like this approach. So that was uh, your React hooks. If you want to investigate more, just go inside of reactjs.org slash docs slash hooks effect. If you have any questions, send me a text or hit me up on CodeMentor. I'm on CodeMentor almost 24-7, CodeMentor.io slash Alessandro Valerani. And thank you very much for watching. Have an amazing day.